as we have as we have shown, when the leadership of the Democratic Party makes the type of decisions that are so out of sight, out of mind, because they clearly do not have a pulse for where the regular person, where the where the working class voter is in this country, I give you the governor of New Mexico who is going out of their way to try to ban guns. Good luck with that. I don't know Governor Grisham. But what I do know is that her move is a loser. Maybe she's with Beta. Well, she well Beta was the congressional representative of El Paso, which kind of slides I mean, underneath maybe they're, New Mexico. Their buddies there, but I got to tell you, because New Mexico is not going to have that. Governor Michelle Luann Grisham said the unusual move was needed after a spate of gun deaths, including of children. But some officials questioned whether it was constitutional. Uh, it's not. It's not constitutional at all. And even South Florida's own David Hogue decided to come out and say, this is out of sight, out of mind. You do not know what you're doing. This is not the answer to well, the Well, it won't withstand problem. any challenge. New Mexico governor said the state is temporarily suspending open and concealed carry of firearms in Albuquerque and the surrounding county for 30 days, describing the unusual move as a necessary response to gun violence. Okay, first of all, what do you think is going to happen in 30 days by not allowing people to have uh, open carry if it is already uh, in law? Well, I don't understand why you're assuming that people are going to follow that. Well, law enforcement has already made it clear that they're not going to follow this, that they will completely disregard. Yeah, I mean, I don't. nobody's going to follow this. But the, the, does the governor not understand that she is throwing away any chance that she's going to have of re-election by doing this? This is a vote of no confidence from law enforcement in the state. Well, maybe she'll get with Beto and they'll run the anti-gun presidential ticket. Here's an idea. You want to deal with gun violence in America? Deal with the fact that we don't have a living wage, we don't have universal education or health care, and we have qualified immunity for police. We have a lot of problems. So when, when Metalopoly and others are complaining about, oh, you just don't want cops to be trained properly. No, because cops will correct their own issues if you took away qualified immunity. I'm so tired of those arguments. Cops are trained in, in you know what, enough. Enough of that. I saw the Uvalde cops standing there doing absolutely nothing for over an hour when one shooter was massacring. And yet children. somehow the very people that they deeply and utterly are resentful of because they know they don't have the courage of when the firefighters got there, they decided to go right in, didn't hesitate, and they didn't have a gun. They firefighters just, would never. Did firefighters go? Into the and you've all yeah that's what they did the firefighters went in there and helped the kids. I always said they they would yeah. like that was my theory no, that's that what if firefighters were there they would help of course but you see that's the difference you see firefighters yeah. are the ones on and remember what today is you know yes the NYPD did their part but the FDNY literally ran into the towers knowing full well that they were probably running up to their deaths and they did it anyway yeah no there's nothing like firefighters. There's, there's just, there is a, it's like a sacred oath I love that firefighters. they take. It's like, it's frankly, it's like being a Marine. Like, you know, that the role you're taking on is one to protect, defend, and serve. That's what is supposed to be here under these circumstances. Well, but, but firefighters do it without weapons. Correct. And so that courage speaks volumes about where the overreach comes into play. Governor Grisham in my opinion, is doing this to get headlines. She's doing this for attention. Oh. She's not really doing this to, in, in, to exact change. Because if she wanted to make change, there's a lot of things that you can do. There's a lot of substantial changes that you can make at the state level in order to make it so. Where's the talk of ending qualified immunity? I don't see it. You want, you want the police to protect and serve? You want them to work within the communities to deal with the fact that there was gun violence in places like Santa Fe and Albuquerque, just like there is in any city in the country? Albuquerque is very, 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 like, it's a very poor, very blue-collar city. And so they probably have suffered a lot. I would think that as a city like that has suffered a lot with a lot of the economic and issues that have been going on. And so, yeah. When people are desperate, they're going to do desperate things. So in places where people are more desperate, yeah, I think you're going to see increased violence. But the idea that somebody thinks given this country and that guns and weapons is basically the only thing we make anymore, that you're going to just make them go away. It's just not, it's not feasible. 
it's not feasible. In each of the last two years, the city of Albuquerque has set records in terms of homicides. Other, com other communities across the country have also experienced bleak increases in gun violence in recent years. This year, Albuquerque is among the many communities that have seen a decrease in homicides, police data shows. Though killings in the city are higher than only a few years ago. So, I don't understand that. But here's the thing we are living in an era where economic anxiety leads to a lot of these significant problems. And to ignore that reality is to just go along to get along and think, well, it's going to be an all or nothing proposition. That doesn't solve anything. There's a reason why you need political nuance. Kind of like what I mentioned before about a noted content creator who we may not agree with on certain things, but gives platform to those that are really out there making change. So going along to get along in that respect is important. Just like recognizing the nuance that is here when it comes to the governor of New Mexico doing something that is only going to hurt the Democratic Party chances even more than it's already being hurt. You have given so much cat and fodder to the political right by pulling this ish. This is one of the stupidest political moves I've ever seen. It th what, 30 days? What do you, in 30 days, you're all going to learn your lesson and you're all now going to, you know, be good. And, yeah, and now I'm going to allow you to do this again. Maybe it's just a name recognition thing for her. Just about doing something to get name recognition. Maybe she's going for like Kamala's job next time. I don't know. Whatever, whatever the governor is going for, she's not going for better political numbers. If anything, she has hurt herself significantly, much as the Democratic Party has significantly hurt itself over the last several years. And for those who still are in denial about how bad, yes, bad, President Biden's presidency has actually been, because it's been very bad, and not because there aren't some positive changes in very nook and cranny instances over the last three years. Has there been anything significant in any way that has generally benefited the working class in the last three years when it was of tantamount importance to move this country to the populist left to avoid the prospect of Donald Trump somehow, some way, getting back in the White House again? No. That hasn't happened. It's only gotten worse. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.